Hello, my name is William Byrne. I'm going to talk to you today about different data collection methods, um, data sampling, and different data types. Uh, the two main types are quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative data is data dealing with numbers and includes things like surveys, interviews, and trials. Qualitative data, on the other hand, is more descriptive in nature and not dealing with numbers. Often includes focus groups, um, doing observations, and written documents. And so with that, there's both primary and secondary data. Primary data is something that you collect either by yourself or with a, a group of team members. Um, so with that, it's obviously brand new and has not been done before. Um, that has its advantages and disadvantages. Um, the fact that you can tailor the experiment and the data collection to exactly what you want is very beneficial. Um, but on the flip side, it can be expensive to main or to obtain that data and very time consuming, um, especially if that means sending out surveys and then waiting for results to occur. Um, secondary data is data that currently already exists. Um, from other experiments or other uh, uh, data types. And that can be um, beneficial in the fact that it's easy to obtain. You just have to go and find the research similar to what you're looking for. But on the other hand, it might not be exactly what you're looking for in terms of um, the different metrics you want to measure. And so when, when collecting data, there's typically a standard of ethics that should be followed. Um, quality assurance deals with um, anything you do before data collection and quality control deals with um, actually um, the ethics and standard with dealing with that data while you're collecting it and after it's been collected. So questionnaires are very popular and there are many different types of questions within that. Um, some of the more common ones are multiple choice and rating. With multiple choice, you select one or more options from a, a set list. And rating is where you select a point on a rating scale. And this example below shows the user gets to choose from one of five different options as well as choosing not applicable. So if you have a question like, you have an understanding of the key principles of knowledge management. The user can select you know, yes, I strongly agree with that, somewhere in between, or I disagree with that. There are also ranking um, questions where you can place a number of options in order of preference. There are open-ended questions allowing you to just type in a response, and that has its negatives in the, in the fact that a lot of times users may not want to respond with, with long paragraphs, or it can be hard to interpret some of that information. Um, and then on the other side, there's closed-ended questions, with it, which are just yes, no, which also have their own negative in the fact that a lot of times um, things can vary and it's not always black and white. So there are a lot of different sampling procedures you can undertake. Um, there's simple random, stratified random, cluster, systematic random, um, non-probability, availability, quota, purpose, and dimensional or snowball. So I'll kind of discuss a few of these, some of these examples and ones that are common. The stratified sampling technique is when you partition the population into groups based on a factor that may influence the variable that's being measured. So with this graphic below, let's look at example, you know, let's say you're looking at all people in the US and you wanna group that by the four different time zones, Eastern, Central, Mountain, Pacific. Um, and then you may further sub subdivide that into a few hundred people from each of the four time zones. And so that sample with a stratified sample would be um, 2,000 people selected with 500 from each of those different time zones. Cluster sampling on the other side is dividing those sample into groups where the groups are microcosms instead of just subsections like before. So 
as in the previous example with the four different time zones, with cluster sampling, instead of taking all four, you may take only two of those, let's say Pacific and Central time zones, and then look at every person within those two time zones. Um, systematic random sampling is taking a sample of members from a large population and selecting a random sample point with a fixed, a fixed periodic interval. So let's say there's a population of 50,000 people. You take a random group of 1,000 and then select a starting point. So let's say it's 20 and then you would increase that by 50 each time. So you would look at randomly the 20th person, the 70th person, 120th, and then so on. Quota sampling is when you specify a list of relevant control categories or quotas, and that can be a lot of different things, such as age or gender or income. And so you try and select, collect a sample that is the same properties as the target population. Um, for example, let's say you're at a university or college and you know that 55% of the population is female and 45% are male. So that's one quota you can look at and then you can look at gender and then further divide it into age. So you may take a list of 1,000 different people, 550 people being female, 450 people being male, and then further divide those two groups um, by a quota of age and select half of those 550 over 21, half under 21. And so that's one way to um, conduct a quota sampling. So with sample size, there are four main things to consider. Um, the margin of error, also known as the confidence interval. Uh, you have to realize that there is no perfect sample, so you have to decide how much error to allow. Um, it determines how much higher or lower than the population mean you're willing to let your sample mean fall. So a lot of the times you'll see this with political polling. Um, a poll may say 55% of the population agrees with Proposition A, and this has a margin of error plus or minus 5%. With population size, um, that's about how many total people fit your demographic. Uh, the, the, the confidence level is um, how confident you want the actual mean to fall within your interval. Um, some, of the most some of the most common confidence intervals are 90% confident, 95, and 99. And lastly, the standard of deviation is how much variance you expect in your responses. So to determine your sample size, um, there's a general equation S equals Z divided by E squared, where S is the sample size, Z is the number relating to the degree of confidence you wish to have, and E is the area you're prepared to accept. And there are a predetermined numbers, so if you're looking at 99% confidence interval, Z would be 2.58. For 95%, Z would be 1.96. 90, Z would be 1.64. And 80, Z would be 1.28. So um, if we look at an example, let's say you're trying to find the amount of people to sample for credit, credit scores. And in this case, you want 99% confidence level with the 5% error acceptance. Going back to the numbers before, 99% equals 2.58. So you do 2.58 divided by that 0 0.05 for the error acceptance, and you square that. So plugging that into a calculator, you would get roughly 2,663 people. So that's the number of people you would have to sample to meet those metrics we outlined above. Um, one of the really good tools you can use is SurveyMonkey. Um, and that's something you can go online and look at. Um, and they can be for many different things, customer satisfaction, education, schooling, or employee engagement. And I'll go over an example of that online um, after I'm done with the end of this presentation. And so looking at all this information, you may be wondering, you know, why is sampling so important? 
why our questionnaire is important, why do we do this? And the reason is, um, if you're able to obtain that data, um, you can turn that data into knowledge and then take action steps based on that. For example, if you're a corporation that wants to increase your profit margin, you may have a series of data that shows um, the company spends $10,000 a month on lunches for um, employees that are traveling and clients. Uh, you may be wanting to ways wanting ways to increase profit margin, so you may decrease. You now let's consider decreasing money spent on lunches by 25%. So knowing that you can take that limit, decrease it, and then in turn see the action steps with that of increased profit margin and better results for your company. So I'll go quickly to SurveyMonkey, and it's just surveymonkey.com. There are other sites with um, similar tools, but this is one of the more popular ones. You can sign up for a free account, and they also have um, more paid options with more uh, details and more um, results that you could look at. Um, but in this example, I've set up an account and this would be for, let's say, an HR company or an HR department in a large corporation wanting to know more about their employees. So you can design your own survey here, custom um, select your different questions, and then there's a sample, sample template that you could use. You can delete certain questions, um, delete certain options and results, or um, decide what exactly you want to ask your employees in this case. And so you can preview it, go through, and in this case, you might ask, you know, what's your job role in the company? What department are you in? And then you can ask specific questions about the company, whether or not they're satisfied, what they think about their career um, advancement opportunities, and so forth. And so you can preview this, go through it, and then once you're done, you have the option to generate a link and you can just copy and paste this, send this out through email or text it to anyone you're interested in sending it out to, um, give them some time to complete the survey and then you can analyze your results and act upon the data that you see. So it's, it's pretty user friendly and easy to use and I encourage you to take the time and create your own survey and um, figure out what you wanna do and what metrics you wanna improve on and then survey and find out where you need that improvement. So I appreciate you taking the time to listen and learn more about data, uh, different data types and sampling. Thank you.